American National Catholic Church. We now ask you to please stand and greet our celebrated Bishop Lucy and join together and sing number 724, Sing of Christ, Proclaim His Glory. That's number 724. forward are transformed by God's love and, and they stay alive in our memory. 
So what we do always as we begin the liturgy, we become aware of our, our failings and our shortcomings. We become aware of our need for God's mercy. We become aware of uh, our need for forgiveness and the need to forgive. And so together we say, I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have sinned through my own fault, in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and in what I have failed to do. And I ask, Blessed Mary of the Virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. God the Father, mercy to the death and resurrection of his Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, has sent the Holy Spirit among us for the forgiveness of sins. To the ministry of the church, may God grant you pardon and peace, and I absolve you of your sins in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. With the angels and the archangels, let us raise our voices in that hymn of praise, the Gloria. Holy Spirit. 
Redeemer. By your power, your only Son has conquered death and has passed from this world into your kingdom. Grant that all the faithful departed may, sh may, may share his triumph over death and enjoy forever the vision of your glory. We ask this through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Amen.
A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Romans. Brothers and sisters, if God is for us, who can be against us? He who did not spare his own son, but handed him over for us all, will he not also give us everything else along with him? Who will bring a charge against God's chosen ones? It is God who acquits us. Who will condemn? It is Christ Jesus who died, rather was raised, who also is at the right hand of God, who indeed intercedes for us. What will separate us from the love of Christ? Will anguish or distress or persecution or famine or nakedness or peril or the sword? No, in all these things we conquer overwhelmingly through him who loved us. For I am convinced that neither death nor life, nor angels nor principalities, nor present things nor future things, nor powers nor height nor depth, nor any other creature will be able to separate us from the love of God in Christ Jesus our Lord. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Because I came down from heaven, not to do my own will, but the will of the one who sent me. And this is the will of the one who sent me, that I should not lose anything of what he gave me, but that I should raise it on the last day. For this is the will of my Father, that everyone who sees the Son and believes in him may have eternal life and I shall raise him up on the last day. Brothers and sisters, the good news of salvation, the gospel of the Lord. of the faithful departed. To some of us, it may be a difficult topic to discuss the reality of death. We all know that our physical bodies will soon cease to exist. On Ash Wednesday, we are reminded of our own mortality when we, when we receive the ashes on our forehead. And as a child, I've always heard the priest say, Remember that you are dust, and to dust you shall return. 
This formula will soon be replaced by <laughs> repent and believe in the gospel. It is but natural for us to fear death. In popular Western culture, death is personified as a skeletal figure carrying a large skype and clothed in a black cloak with a hood. This, it is an imagery that provokes fear. What power do we have to escape death? We can perhaps slow aging, cure diseases, but we do not have the technology to live forever. For those who do not believe that our souls continue to live beyond our physical death, death is the end of everything. Some of them may be comfortable with this perception, but some may be not. But for us, who believe in Christ and follow His teachings, death is not the end. We know Christ, who died and rose from the dead. As St. Paul states in his letter to the Corinthians, if Christ did not rise from the dead, then our faith would be in vain. We perhaps may have suffered the loss of our loved ones. Our faith in Christ gives us hope that those whom we love did not simply cease to exist. Our faith give us, gives us hope that we will once again see them and spend the rest of eternity in the heavenly kingdom. We are comforted by the belief that those whom we love, who have passed, are actively praying for us and guiding us here on earth. Our love for them and their love for us never cease to exist. It is this love which binds us to them, a love that transcends the boundaries of time and space. I still remember the day when my grandmother passed away. It was a cloudy, rainy, and gloomy day. I was in college, and school was canceled because of inclement weather. A few days before, she was admitted to the Veterans Hospital, and I had heard news that her condition was getting better. I was hopeful that she would be discharged in a few days. It was October 4th, 1993, the feast day of St. Francis. A few years ago, I participated in a transitive celebration, and I went to my former high school which was a Franciscan school, in the hopes that I would be attending another transit celebration or any liturgical celebration so I could offer prayers for the recovery of my grandmother. When I arrived at, from, at my former school, I found the church doors closed. Suddenly, I had the urge call home to find out the situation about my grandmother. I went to a telephone booth, which some of you may not recognize what it is, <laughs> and then dialed our home number. I did not hear any ring, but I heard people talking. I heard my father telling my mother, who was at that time working in Saudi Arabia, saying that my, my grandmother had already passed away. And upon hearing the news, I did not interrupt my mother in my father's conversation, and I immediately hung up the phone. With such deep sorrow and emotions in my heart, I, heard, I hurriedly rode a bus to go to the monastery of St. Clair. There, I heard beautiful singing in the chapel from behind the monastery of St. Clair. I prayed in front of the Blessed Sacrament inside the monstrance, and my prayers helped me through this time of sorrow. In my visit to the monastery, after my visit to the monastery, I arrived home. The people in the house were about to tell me about the sad news, and I told them, 
I already knew about it. Perhaps they were more baffled of how I found out the news of my grandmother's death. In my heart, it was something more than just a glitch in the telephone system. It may probably just a it may probably be just a glitch, but my experience tells me something more that it was the love of my grandmother making it happen. She perhaps knew the prayers will get me through this time of distress, and it was a way of telling me that she's all right. After her death, there were legends lurking around our neighborhood that my grandmother knew her time was about to end, leaving everyone messages to take care of us in her hopes and wishes for each of us. She told someone she was visited by some dark figures. I'm not sure these legends were true, but I always treated them with some, some skepticism. A few months later, I had a dream about my grandmother in a beautiful garden. I saw her in a happy place, and when I woke up, I realized it was around the time of her birthday. So my experience regarding my grandmother's death reinforced my belief that the dead does not simply cease to exist. Death is not something we should face with great anxiety. Our life here on earth is temporal, but our love for one another goes beyond. Be comforted by the fact that those whom we love are in a much better place, and they continue to help us by praying for us. I believe that my grandmother's prayers contributed to my own spiritual journey. Her prayers nudged me to make better decisions in my life. And when in times of distress, I call upon her to pray for me. I invite you to remember all those whom you love who have passed away. The Book of Wisdom says, The souls of the just are in the hand of God, and no torment shall touch them. The Gospel says that those who believe in Jesus will have eternal life and will raise them up on the last day. Offer a prayer for them today. We will soon see them again, and until that day comes, continue to do the will of the Father here on earth. Eternal rest, grant unto your faithful departed, O Lord, and let perpetual life shine upon them. May their souls rest in peace. Amen. <laughs> Let us stand and profess our faith in our living God as we say, We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten not made, what I be with the Father. Through God all things were made, for us and for our salvation, He came down from heaven. By the power of the Holy Spirit, He was born of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered, died, and was buried. On the third day he rose again, in fulfillment of the scriptures. He ascended into heaven, and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son. With the Father and the Son he is worshipped and glorified, he has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. 
Let us raise our prayers and confidence to God the Father, knowing that he will hear and answer. Our response will be, Lord, hear our prayer. Lord, hear our prayer. Let us pray to our living God, who created us for life and happiness. God will not give us up to death, but give us eternal life. We pray. Lord, hear our prayer. For all who vote, that they exercise their duty with wisdom and care, we pray. Lord, hear our prayer. For those who mourn the death of loved ones, for the abandoned elderly, for the lonely, the sick, and the dying, and for those who face fear and injury, they may lift their eyes to the face of the crucified and risen Christ, and in him find a hope that do not disappoint. We pray. Lord, hear our prayer. For the ANCC, that we may help and support one another on the journey through life, we pray. Lord, hear our prayer. For the sick and their caregivers, that they know the healing power of God's love. And for those who would like to especially remember, Mark Alderberry, Michelle, Alfonso Jenkins. Would you join me in praying for Sister Anne, the superior of the Bernadine Sisters House in Pennsylvania, where I just gave a retreat this weekend. She's just been diagnosed with uh, stage four cancer, that God might uh, heal her. For all who have gone before us, be born to eternal life. Are there any whom we should especially remember? New York, California. Mm -hmm. Warren Fox. Angelo Del Rossi. Almighty God, our hope for eternal life, we bring you our prayers and, and petitions, those which we've spoken aloud and those in the depths of our heart. We, hear you, we ask you to hear and answer them if they be for our good, and we make them in the name of Christ, your Son. Amen. gifts are gathered and prepared, we invite you all to join with us and sing number 602, Be Not Afraid. That's number 602. Shall the desert, but you shall not fly away.
sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice of your hands with praise and glory and majesty for the good of the all God's church. In your kindness, Lord, accept our offering for all who sleep in Christ, that by the power of his unique sacrifice they may be freed from the shackles of death and enter the kingdom of life eternal, where he lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation always and everywhere to give you thanks, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, through Jesus Christ our Lord. In Him who rose from the dead, our hope of resurrection dawned. The sadness of certain death gives way to the bright promise of immortality. Lord, for your faithful people, life is changed, not ended. When the body of our earthly dwelling is laid aside, we gain an everlasting dwelling place in heaven. And so with the angels and the archangels, with all the heavenly hosts, we proclaim your glory and join in their unending hymn of praise. in your own likeness and entrusted the whole world to our care so that in serving you alone our creator we might be stewards of all creation even when we disobeyed you and turned away from you you did not we did not lose your friendship you did not abandon us to the power of death but extended your hand in mercy that we may search uh, that we may search and find you again and again you offered us a covenant and through the prophets nurtured the hope of salvation Father, you so loved the world that in the fullness of time you sent your only Son to be our Savior. Made flesh by the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary, he lived as one of us in all things but sin. To the poor he proclaimed the good news of salvation, to prisoners freedom, and to those in sorrow joy. In order to fulfill your purpose, he gave himself up to death, but by rising from the dead he destroyed death and restored life and that we might live no longer for ourselves, but for each other and for him who died and rose for us. He sent the Holy Spirit from you, Father, as the first gift to those who believe, to complete his work on earth and renew the world in perfect holiness. Lord, we pray that this same Holy Spirit may sanctify these gifts. Let them become the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ, that we may celebrate the great mystery which he left us as an everlasting covenant. When the hour had come for him to be glorified by you, Father most holy, having loved his own who were in the world, he loved them to the end. While they were at supper, he took bread, he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to all of those whom he loved, and said, Take this, all of you, and eat it. This is my body, which will be given up for you. In the same way, he took the cup filled with wine. Again, he gave you thanks and praise. And giving the cup to his disciples, he said, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. This is the cup of my blood, the blood of the new and everlasting covenant. It will be shed for you and for all, so that sins may be forgiven. Do this in memory of me. Let us proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ has died, hallelujah. 
Hallelujah, Christ is risen. Hallelujah, Christ will come again. Hallelujah, Hallelujah. And so, Lord God, we celebrate the memorial of our redemption. We recall Christ's death and his descent among the dead. We proclaim his resurrection and his ascension to your right hand. And looking forward to his coming in glory, we offer you the sacrifice of his body and blood, an offering acceptable to you, which brings salvation to the whole world. Lord, look upon the sacrifice which you yourself have prepared for your church, and by your Holy Spirit gather all who share this one bread and one cup into the one body, a living sacrifice of praise, a, a living sacrifice in Christ, to the praise and glory of your name. Lord, remember those for whom we make this offering, your servants, the patriarchs of Alexandria, Antioch, Constantinople, Jerusalem, and Rome, I, your unworthy servant, and all bishops, the priests, deacons, and other ministers of your church, those who take part in this offering, those here present, and all your people, and all who seek you with a sincere heart. Remember those who have died in the peace of Christ. Josephine, Thomas, Lucido, Geronimo, Rosita, Julia, Jonathan, Jose, Lalo, Lori, Yvette, Major Eugene, Miriam, Doris, Barry, Elizabeth, Natalie, Anna, Mariah, Calguero, Adam, Susan, and Bert, Maria, Margaret, Tracy, Sieg, and Jerry, Betty and Frank, Maureen, Don, Jim, Ned, John, Catherine, Carmelo, Martuis, Andrew, Kathleen, Stella, Lois, Marie, Stephen, Michelle, Charlotte and Mary, so, so, uh, Celeste, Sheila and Mary, Marion and John, Sister Antoinette, Tony and May, Richard, Joan, Jacques, Mary, Rick, Geraldine, Ernest, Walter, Rosemary, Warren, John, Frank, Thomas, Dominique, Jean, Anne, Grace, Kurt, Amelia, Bruce, William and Carol, Patty, Milton, Nicholas, Jennifer, David, Julia, Val, Maria, Roy, Theodore, Irene, Glenn, Blanca, Richard, Lady, Kathleen, George, and Ruth Ann. With these and all the dead whose faith is known only to you. Merciful Father, grant that we, your children, may enjoy the inheritance of heaven with Mary, the Virgin Mother of God, with the apostles and all your saints, there together with all creation, set, set free from the corruption of sin and death, we shall sing your glory through Christ our Lord, through whom you bless the world with all that is good. Through him, with him, in him, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours, Almighty Father, forever and ever.
Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, I leave you peace, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and grant us the peace and unity of your kingdom, where you live forever and ever. Amen. The peace of Christ be with you. And also with you. Let us offer each other the sign of Christ's peace.
uh, a chilled friend with us up here. So I'm hoping to God he gets out okay, right? So, uh, uh, and they have this wonderful tree of life. And I asked uh, the superior who's very sick, and she said it's been very successful for them. So, so please think about, especially on this day, acknowledging those you love with remembering them with a leaf or a brick. It's just so important. And then we're going to locate that in the new building uh, it's very prominently. So, uh, so do that. I saw the, the, the party's on the 6th, so, so please uh, come and join us for that. We are entering the season of Advent, and so we'll be, uh, we'll be, uh, we'll be moving uh, towards Christmas. Please pray for Mario. He called me. He has a sore throat. So he couldn't be with us today, but keep him in your prayers. Uh, we're hoping he's going to be okay for, for uh, Marco. I don't know Mario. It's Marco. Marco. His dad's in the back yelling, Mario, Marco. I don't know. I, uh, listen, I'm so tired. I drove in from, uh, from Pennsylvania, and I gave five conferences this weekend, so I don't know if I'm coming or going. Um, uh, Allison. Oh, Sandy, come on. Okay. Um, so we're starting our United Tradition. It's November. Uh, we do Thanksgiving baskets for the needy. I have um, a list of about three or four items on a colored piece of paper, and each color belongs to a specific box for about 15 people. We actually have so many boxes this year, I ran out of colors, so there are a few, some with numbers. Um, if you want to take more items, that's fine. Um, you can start bringing them in next week, uh, all the way up until the Sunday before Thanksgiving, and then we're going to box them and give them to the families who need them. Please remember your colors, that's all I keep stressing. I know I sound a little crazy OCD, and I swear I'm not, but um, it's the only way to make sure that every box has the right thing, and, and one box doesn't have eight cans of peas or anything, so. You can tell Allison's a teacher. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> oh, um. Um, I'm working with the Eastern Service Workers Association, uh, volunteering with them, and they're helping people who are undocumented, domestic workers and stuff like that. Um, so we're, we're looking for some uh, clothing, food, uh, any kind of office equipment, and um, you know, possibly seeing that we may have a couple of folks come up and maybe they could share some of their experience with us. So. We usually do a coat drive, so we can we can do this this year. We can actually have people that we can identify where these things will go to. So that's great. So bring those things here. Uh, bring those things here. Don't. Um, next week we have the uh, Sunday school for all the children. That's the pre-communion, the communion, and the post-communion. We're trying to start at 11:45 so that the children can come back for the liturgy of the Eucharist. So if you would have your children meet us in the 1145 in the in the vestibule and they will go upstairs and come back because uh, many of them have received the sacraments, but we'll them to be part of the mass. And we will email everybody else that isn't here today. Thank you. And Sister Joan and Maria are looking for some help in uh, teaching. So if you if you have some anyone participate in the uh, in the faith education of our children, that would be really important to do. So thank you for that. Thank you for that. Um, today, huh? Sister Maria, I really am more tired than I thought. I, I taught a class once and I just called everyone Jim. So, uh, it's November. Do we have any birthdays? Right, so stand up, Leo, no, and, no. oh no, uh, Leo's older brother, Sal, is visiting. By the way, poor Leo throws his whole family under the bus, one at a time, I think, right? <laughs> so, uh, so Leo's brother, Sal, who else is in the back? I saw a hand in the back. Tell us your name. Jason. Jason and Joe, stand up for us, right? So, so Sal, Jason, and Joe, happy birthday. Oh, sweetheart. And, uh, and, uh, and uh, Marguerite, right? Marguerite and her mother are uh, just moved from Philadelphia. Uh, my hometown, so uh, so Marguerite, uh, Marguerite's birthday. It looks like you're our youngest, right? So you're our youngest. So we're going to sing Happy Birthday to you. Is that all right? So, all right. so, so uh, and, and may God bless you all for many years of health and happiness. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Brother Didi's humbly and thinking of
about the description of death as a skeletal figure with a scythe, and I was thinking about me and my crozier. <laughs> uh, so, just so you know, that crozier was made for me by my diocese in Cameroon, and they're very proud of a particular wood that they export, and they call it real wood. And so they made me that crozier, and I, uh, it's very precious to me. And so I don't carry it often because I tend to drop things a lot. So, but today I thought it would be important to remember my, uh, my, uh, the Sea of Cameroon, uh, which I was the chief shepherd for, and the deceased of that diocese as well. So remember them in your prayers. So let us pray. <laughs> Lord, you have, accepted, you have accepted this sacrifice offered for our departed sisters and brothers. Bless them with your mercy and crown the grace they received in baptism with the full measure of eternal joy. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. May Almighty God bless you in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. The Mass is ascended. Let us go in peace to love and serve the Lord. Thanks be to God. Let us all go forth, joining in singing number 445 for all the saints. That is number 445. For all the saints.